Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm ready to now stitch in the signature for this particular cover. Everything's dry, that feels really good. So I'm happy I added that um, PVA glue because I just um, didn't feel like it was gripping enough due to all of the different layers. So before I proceed with the signatures, I just need to do a little task. Now I wanna make a hole in the center at the top here for this little brad. So I'm just gonna push my, my oar through or my pokey tool. And I've got my little brad, so it will need to have its little legs closed and then through that hole, which is hard to see when you've got holy lace on the other side, but I've got it through the little hole and out this side comes the little brad and then I just split her open and that holds it. Oops. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So the next thing I want to do is add some fabric here. Or do I need to? The, the reason I'm wanting to do it is to cover this. But I sort of like the way the stitching is, but I do really like this too. I'm just wondering if I should, should bother. Mm. I do like it, but I like the stitching. It's another way I could cover that up. I might just put in there a little piece of lace. What have we got? I'm just looking at these little characters here. I wonder if I just do that, just as a little decorative piece. And that'll cover the little brad. Um, like it will work. Do I like it? I'm thinking I do need the fabric because um, that is creating bulk for the signatures to sit on. So without really realising your signatures at the top are going to be bending forward just ever so much, but it might be enough to put stress on the paper. What I should have done is put this brad in between, like when I made the piece, I should have done all of this construction, then laid this um, fabric over the little brad and then did the machine stitching. So in hindsight, yeah. I probably could have not put the brad on too. I've created more work for myself by putting that little brad there, but I really wanted to show you what you can do with them because I, I think they're lovely little elements to add to journals. So I'm gonna try and make use of the stripe and cut fabric that side of the stripe. Now, where's my... I'll use the stripe as my, the blue line as my guide, because the fabric won't tear. That's it. Now, this will need to dry again, so I either stop the video and come back later today when it's had a time to dry. I like to lay my spines in the sun if I can. It really helps to activate the glues. It's um, the warmth really helps. That fold should be pretty much right. So if you have a nice warm sunny spot and you've glued some fabrics on anything in the way of covers and spines, especially things that are getting handled, just let them lay there in the sun a little bit. And you'll find that as they warm up, they really, really take. Okay. Yep, that's gonna be good. 
So now I'm just going to run some glue. Now it's, there's not a lot of pressure on this section of the spine because the pages are going to be helping also hold things. But you do want to make sure you get plenty of glue. This is a thinner fabric, so I'm not too concerned that I've got, you know, issues there with um, it not gripping. Now I'll just put a bit of art glitter glue in that area there because that's where the the pressure is going to be so I might just smear that out a little so I sort of like how this fabric's bringing it back to a more natural look again like the others just going to make sure that stripe looks visually really straight like I remember someone saying to me when I was learning to sew you have to be brave and true with stripes because if it's not right you will see it so for years I'd avoid stripes because you know you only need to make a project once and realize that it's just not quite right that it can put you right off but now I tend to use them quite a lot because I've got so many florals that when you add stripes into the mix it can break up the mess of florals if that makes sense so I find I use them a lot now and uh, I've embraced them. And at the end of the day, if they're crooked, it doesn't matter. I don't know who told me that. It was probably a, a nasty old home economics teacher that I didn't like. Not that I didn't have many teachers I didn't like. I tended to like them all. They're pretty good. I went to school in a country town, so it was um, it was really good. I cannot complain. Some of the stories my husband's told me, and he went to school in Brisbane. And some of his stories, oh my goodness, those poor kids. Okay, that feels really strong now. I'm glad I did the extra layers. It just gives the journal a little bit of strength. Now I'm just going to trim this back just a little bit because I want to see more of the lace popping out and the brown sort of overpowering it yeah that's good now while we're here we might do the template that I'm going to use to um, make the holes if I can find it goodness me Goodness me, that is nice and thick. I should have measured it, shouldn't I? That would have been a smart thing to do. I think from memory it was about two inches. Let's see what I, if I'm right. One and a half. Oh, I think you're a little bit more than that. Or maybe not. Oh no. Yeah, one and a half. There you go. Okay, so that's all I need to know at this stage. Now I'm going to set that aside. Yeah, I like that. Do not bend it at this stage. You can bend the front when you're doing that side, but not the inside because it will crease and buckle. Like it's not the end of the world, but it's one of those little, little rules. <clears throat> okay, I'm just getting my cutter. I'm gonna cut this piece of cardboard at one and a half. I just feel like that was bigger, that spine. What's that piece of cardboard? One and three quarters. I'm just gonna bring it back up to my desk. I know it's probably got a bit smaller due to the fabrics being pushed in. So that's always possible. 
yeah I'm gonna use the bigger piece I just feel like that's closer now what I am going to do is also mark the top and bottom so if you know how to do this I'm not telling you anything you don't know but if you're new this is how I make a template for stitching in signatures let me bring that up so I've now measured the template the template fits in the belly in the in the valley of my piece and now I need to know the height of my book now you can stitch in your signatures without doing this and I do if it's a single signature but being I've got three the degree of difficulty is high I'm getting it right straight and true so the next thing I want to do is mark some lines for myself let's just sharpen my little pencil Otherwise, you've got thick, thick, bodgy lines. And when you're putting holes into things, you want to know that your hole is in the right spot. So the first thing we want to do is I'm going to use my um, board here to just get it squared up to some lines. And I'm finding the center. Now, it's slightly past that line and that line. So by eye, I can see that it's sitting roughly in between the two big dark lines. Can you see that? So now I want to mark my center. All right, there and there. And I want to pick a line for my signature to be stitched in. So I am going to use those dotted lines. To me, that seems like it'd be enough space for everything to expand and be even. Okay, so now I'm going to just leave it there for a moment and get my ruler and draw through and draw through. The next thing I do is I write top. So that way, every time I pick up signatures, and this or my book and I go to do a hole I've written the word top there so I know that that's the top of my journal the next thing I do is I want to find half so I just fold it in half so that'll be where the center hole is to go I just make sure that's nice and straight which it should be and then probably come down about an inch and a half for the next line. So where's my grid? That's why these mats are really handy. So I can then just, using the lines on the mat, pick inch and a half from the bottom okay so now using my book that I glue on which I'm going to just separate a bit from I got so low on gluing books that the book I used for punching holes in I actually Oh, that's all loose. I'll have to use them for gluing on now. I might just turn it over. I'm going to make a heap of holes in it. So the book I was doing that too for ages. I end up using portions of it for um, gluing. You know, laying paper on and gluing the back. So now I'm just going to make a hole where all of these junction points are and that will be my guide for stitching okay nice and simple so while that cover is still moist I'm going to push in the holes 
because what that does is because there's a little bit of glue still hanging around that hasn't fully adhered I'm going to make those holes and any little threads that my holes may make have the potential of having a little bit of glue there to sort of make it feel a little stronger so let's get the cover back up and get those holes done so the top to the top of the book Not the easiest to feel when you've got all that fabric and lace. But I can see by eye that's pretty good and nice and straight. I've got stripes to aid me. Now you've got a couple options. You can push straight through onto a book and um, make a hole. But I'm just going to use my lead pencil and make some marks. There's no real procedure. Everyone's got a slight different twist on it. So that's pretty good. So I'll just keep my template for now. I can chop that other piece aside. Now I'm going to just lift my book up, pop it on here, and I'm going to make my holes. Now, being that I have lace on the other side, they're not going to be the easiest to see. But I think we'll be able to figure it out when it comes time to stitch in. And I can see on the I can see on the stripe where my little holes are. So it shouldn't be too hard to find them when it comes to do the signatures. Now the signatures themselves, I've got them prepped to some degree. But, and with bull clips on, I'm ready to hold them, but it's been a couple days. So I'm just actually going to pull them apart now, those bull clips, and just double check everything. I sort of feel like I need to. So I'm looking for upside down pages. So now that I've made my little holes, I'm just going to force this through to make a bigger hole. Because at the end of the day, I need my needle to go through. Is my other book or I prefer this one this one's really old I inherited my grandmother's sewing machine my, her treadle and this tool was in one of the drawers and when I asked her because she was gone she had gone into a nursing home when we cleared out her house for her and that's when I got my sewing machine and I said to her about this tool and um, she was probably oh she was 96 when she passed so let's let's say 100 years here and then she said that this tool belonged to her aunt her sister's mother no her mother's sister the sentence is and um she said it came from um prussia germany when they uh, immigrated so it's sort of when you have a look at the top of it it's like really unusual it's like a pressed forged metal has been shaped around the edge of the timber yeah it's beautiful I didn't put that paint on that that came like that so that tool and she was sort of of the opinion that it may even be even older so it's a real old girl this one it's so strong this is the one that come with the kit from the amazon uh, pack i bought that gave me the needle the book all it gave me one of these and the heap of the um here they are heap of these strings i think you get three three of the wax linen threads so um pretty good pack and i bought that ages ago and i think it even came with these needles there you go so if you are in need of a um 
uh, bookbinding kit is the word you'd need to search. I have put it in my favorite things in the Amazon um, link in the description, but just have a good look around because now they're sort of everywhere because everyone's sort of hunting for them. So you can often find that they're um, maybe a better price. So have a look at it anyway. It might be, might be competitive. Now, just grabbing the signatures. So what I want to do is make sure that everything is correct and true in it. Now, I do need to add to my template another measurement, which is the page measurement. And that's where the pages will sit in the journal. So they're all the same, which is good. So just by eye, I'm finding the top and the bottom I'm just marking it. So that now gives me a guide that when I slide it into the center of these papers to push the holes into there, this is the new line I use instead of the edge of my template because your pages are always sitting within your book cover a little bit because you don't want them bumping on the ground of the shelf. So you always have this extra mark there and the top the top always the top okay so let's have a little look in here they should be okay but I don't know something's telling me to double check so I'll get rid of these big bull clips and it's just about having a good look at where they're positioned if you like the position and that's good Yeah. That's good. I think it's because when I actually did this, it was a little rushed. I was sort of at the end of the day in the room and I just wanted to get going on to the next thing, which I think was cooking some lunch or dinner. I can't remember now. And I felt like, so what I'm doing is I've slid my metal ruler into that crease and with that finger down there I'm applying a lot of pressure so that just helps everything sit down into the, the, the groove a lot better all of those pages are nicely embedded down in that center so I can pull my ruler out and that now is ready to have the template slide in top to top of the page little lines lined up yep once again my finger is now resting on top of the template and all i've got to do is look for those cross lines there to push my hole through my papers now the other trick for the newbies out there is always keep your pages at a v because that keeps the hole right dead center in the the center of the fold so from there I can do that hole, that hole, and then I can slither up here, just opening up my hand a little bit to allow me to see down in there to get that hole. So now I can get rid of my template and I just stand it up, run my hand down the center and just support the papers as I push through again, just opening up those holes a little bit more. Where is that top one gone? There it is. Lovely. And just be gentle. And you'll have yourself some nice, nice holes. You can see the light coming through there. So that's ready to go. And then just place that to one side. So when we're ready to put our signature in, we can um, pick it up and pop it in. So once again, I'm just going to open this up and just double check everything is where I want it. Everything's up the right way. Yep. 
lovely. Oh, I haven't cut that paper. There we go. There was something. See that there, that fold? I'd like to remove the bulk from that join. Not that this paper's too much of an issue because it's so, so thin, but it will sit better if we can nip this out. There we go. So, look, there was something. I just had a feeling that I had to just take a moment and check this. Isn't that odd? I always get these weird little feelings. A classic is I was I was at Woolworths, our grocery store. This was years ago. I'd only I think my husband and I had only just got married, so we were fairly young. And I was at Woolies and I was walking down the uh, aisle where they sell shaving cream. And this feeling came over me that I needed to buy some shaving cream. And no, it wasn't. It was a razor. That's what it was. It was a razor. And my husband, he, um, so I'm just lining up the top with the top, the lines with the lines, and now I can do my holes. And he, at that stage, was just using an electric shaver and I think we'd only been married a few years, so he's still fairly young and electric shaver all the way. It was the thing. So um, I'm walking down this aisle and I happen to glance at the razor blades. For well, not razor blades, you know, the, the handheld shaving blades. Anyway, um, I got this, I don't know, this feeling that I needed to buy one. And I thought, no, I don't. Why? It doesn't make sense. My um, instinct was to buy it, but my logic kicked in and said, don't be silly, he has an electric razor. It's a waste of money. So I kept going, didn't think much more of it. Probably about four days later, we decided to um, go somewhere and he went to have a shave and guess what? The electric razor didn't work. It had just had its day. And um, I could hear this moaning and groaning coming from the bathroom. And I sort of thought, oh, I wonder what's what's going on. So he, I went in there and he says, oh, my electric razor has just gone kaput. It is not working anymore. And I, I don't know. I, I just had the, the weirdest feeling. I was like, you know, I was standing there in the aisle at Woolies. And something told me to buy a shaver for you. But my logic said, don't be silly. He has an electric one. And here we are now with no, no um, shaving apparatus. So ever since that day, whenever I get a little feeling like that, you better check this or you better do this. You know that feeling? I listen to it and so many times it pans out. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it's just me thinking things through. Probably most of the time it's just me. But every so often I have a little situation where, oh. Especially when I'm driving around looking for a craft shop and I can't find it. And you get the feeling, oh, before I give up, I'll just have a look down here. And there it is. That's probably not the feeling. That's probably just me not giving up to find that craft shop. <laughs> Alrighty, now here's the hole, another hole, and uh, another hole. So now everything is pretty ready to stitch in. I just have to wait for my glue to dry on that fabric, which is no rush. I'm sure you all know how to stitch in signatures if you don't google it and you might just find not only how to do it but you might find another junk journal maker that might catch your attention so I don't think I need to show you that but I'm pretty much going to just needle and thread some wax linen thread 
you can use a lot of threads to tie in your signatures to stitch them in but i'm a bit of a fan of the wax linen because it tends to grip on itself a little bit and is very secure and it's gentle on the paper sometimes the fibers of threads can be quite harsh on the paper and can do a little bit of tearing so but it's up to you use what you've got depending on the look of your journal you might want to use some hessian string but that can be very harsh on your papers so what else can I tell you about that? I think that's probably about it for stitching in signatures. I always have my knot in the middle, but you don't have to. You can have the knot on the spine. As your threads go, your needle goes in, comes through the spine and out the back and then finds its way back through to the center, then comes over to the bottom hole, down, out through to the spine and then back up through the center so that both threads are coming through the center. I always try and have them coming up with the thread that is going through to be either side so that when I knot it, it catches that long stitch through the center here. That'd be the only other thing I'd mention. Um, you can do all sorts of decorative things as your needle comes out and it's scooting up here to go back in on the outside of your cover that is. You could thread beads and buttons on and it looks gorgeous, but um, the only thing I will say is it is a little extra pressure on your spine. So if you're using buttons, try and find really flat ones and beads, really flat ones, so that the, the, the cotton or string or the, the twine, whatever you're using, isn't sort of pulling, pulling on the um, book pages too much. Okay, well, I might actually stop the video here and then when that's dried, I will join in again and we'll stitch in those signatures so i will see you in a moment bye for now hello everyone welcome back to my channel okay now um this has dried so you would have seen me do this section of my journal process of getting my book ready and now it's time to stitch in my signatures so i've grabbed my wax linen thread i've got my needle that I use which has a nice blunt end on it and I just need to decide which signature is going to be where so I like the look of that when you first open the journal so that's definitely going to be the first one we know the Edith page is going to be in the middle and then we have this one at the back so I always start with the back signature I think it's because I'm right-handed it just seems to be a little easier to um, do the step so threading the needle through the center hole keeping the pages in my hand in that V as much as I can because it lines the hole up nicely because remembering um, we made the hole with the V so we should try and create that V as much as we can so that we know that we're in the right spot with our needle so I'm now just coming through and this is where the challenge is going to be is finding the hole to go back because we're looking at lace here which is full of holes and has actually hidden my hole so I just need to take a moment there it is oh that wasn't so hard I was a bit nervous about that degree of difficulty high now I'm going to go back in my papers here that should come through felt good yes I'm going to scoot to the top and through again and I just need a little bit more thread to get me where I need to go so I'm just going to gently pull that through I don't cut my thread you can and it's usually three times the height is the length of cordage or um, thread you need so now I need to go back through there but not piercing the thread so I'm just going to get my hand in there it's tricky with these ties so let's see if we can find our way back through and oh goodness me it is fiddly i'm gonna be honest it is fiddly especially with big books no i'm not 
not through. There we go. I've got the hole. We're through. And now I'm going to come back, hopefully, through. Yeah, got it. Now it's just a case of get the, your... Remember I said earlier in the video that you need the two threads to come up either side of this guy? So at the moment, they're both on that one side. So I just need to make sure this fellow goes through here. Now, I'm going to remove the clamps because I now want the book to settle into an open book form. So what I mean by that is I'm going to pull my threads now tight. Now to save a little, I could probably work out which one I pull and cinch that tight. That's it. And making sure that it feels firm this side. It's not caught on anything, which it does. I'm actually going to now knot it. Just give it another little tug. So those clamps help you hold it in the V, but naturally those clamps aren't in books. So you don't want them around when you're doing this stage of it. You want them gone so that the pages sort of lay a little flat in the cover. So I'm happy with that. Now, before I close it, I'm just gonna go through and just crease each page into its new position and that just helps it really settle into its spine i won't say forever spine because who knows someone will come along and may take it apart and redesign and remodel which is the fun of these journals the number of journals i've purchased over the years myself and then i've pulled them apart and gone again because it's very easy to to, to do that with the um, pamphlet stitch just snip the thread put some bull clips on first snip the thread if you want to put bull clips on you might want to just refine the holes when you're ready and slide in additional papers which will work as well okay so that's pretty good now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply one of these small bull clips to that signature that's just going to hold it all together and out of my way because I'm going to stitch the next one in now so let's get again my thread. Well, that went reasonably successfully. Can go pear shaped pretty easy doing this. So don't feel like you're failing at it. If it's just like you feel so cack handed and it's everywhere, it just is like that. It's just a challenge. Now that I've got one already done, I can actually see the ball clips don't help either. Paper clips are probably better, but I haven't been able to find those really big ones that you sometimes see the girls use. If I could get some big paper clips, they might make it a little simpler for me. But this works. So do I need them? Probably not. It's just another supply for the room that I probably don't need. You know how it is. I'm just now pulling that through there, back down through the center. Careful not to split my thread. If you do split your thread, all it does is it makes it really hard to tighten up, tighten up your um, stitches to sort of have the journal um, stay in position because you've, you're, you're now coming through the thread. So that's why they say, you know, be careful not to split your thread. Have I got everything up the right way? Yes, good. <laughs> Should have checked that before I carried on here. So now I can just pull this a little bit to not waste any of that cordage. But it is, if you use waxed linen thread like I am here, it's quite difficult to actually split it. And if you use a needle that is rounded at the tip, 
not a point. It's very difficult to split it. So it's probably not a bad idea to find a needle that sort of won't cause you the grief to start with. So I'm just going through and it's very enjoyable doing this stage of the journal. I think it's like it's suddenly becoming something legitimate. Prior to that, it's just a collection of papers and a, an idea. Now it actually feels like a book. I really enjoy enjoy this. So if you've got any where you can see it puckering out where the hole has because we've pushed through the paper the edge of the paper might be a little bit furred out there just use your nail and just run your nail in at that edge and it'll rebend any fibers that are out on the paper back in on itself and then because most of the time I use this um, what do you call it wax linen thread it um, I'm not going to use those big bull clips because they're so bulky and I'm going to carefully switch out this little guy and use that to hold that signature that I just stitched in into position because it's just adding more bulk to the task which doesn't need to be as hard as I'm making it. Oh, goodness me. There we go. All right. So now we're ready to go again. So far, so good. Those two went in really well. Let's see if I can pull it off. The trifecta here through the hole. Down to the bottom hole. Oh, I love a soft spine. I think it's because I've done so many spines the other way that it just is nice change. You know, when you make something over and over and over again, it becomes a bit laborious. So to see new ideas and think of new ideas yourself is just a pleasure. It's like it re reignites you again. Now that needle didn't come through to the center as good as it did previously. So I just need to back off a little bit, take my time, line up the papers. There we go, now we got it. So up to the top hole, get my V. That's why it's not lining up, keep that V. And then you'll find your, your hole. And back down through there. Oops, it's looking good. I hope everything's up the right way. Yes, it is. Nothing worse than a signature that is around the wrong way. So I need a little bit more thread to come through. So I'm just gonna stop for a moment, give myself a little bit more thread. Am I pulling that the right way? Yes. So that should come through there, okay. Now we're ready to come back up through the center. Yes, that's worked. Oh, we're on the home straight, guys. Here we go. Will that come through the center? Yes, did I catch it? No, excellent. We're in, we are home. So I removed the big clips. They are big. I don't usually use the really big ones like this. The next size down is more than enough but that's what I had on my table when I was putting this together so now I'm just gonna pinch that forward actually I need to get rid of a little bit of excess so let's do that pull that back through hello fudge obviously has something to say hey pussycat yeah isn't it funny how they change the tone of their meow as you talk back to them they're definitely saying something and they think I understand or at least they've worked out a tone that triggers reactions from me. That's what I think it's probably more about. Not so much a language. Well, maybe it is. Who knows? But I think it's more he's adapted a tone that gets a response from me. So when he's bellowing and I come running to see what's going on, 
he can either be standing near a door to go outside to the toilet or he's standing near his bowl. <laughs> and that bellow gets the desired result. Lovely. Oh, the journal has just taken a breath. It has come alive. Might just trim that a little bit more. It's bashing into that spine just a little bit. So I'm just going to snip that back while I see it. And I might as well glue. I might just fold that over just to give it a little bit of support. Make that edge a little stronger. Oh, now it comes to the good bit. Adding the ephemera and making anything stuffing pockets there's always a fine line of going overboard and it's sort of becoming your own journal especially if you're selling it to um, you know letting them have a little play with it and you're not doing too much if it's your own journal it's got a little tear so it's finding that edge there we go that's got it bit fiddly. There's my little bit of William Shakespeare, the donor book. She's an old girl. She's a real old girl. 1888, I think, was on the cover. And the cover was beautiful leather. And that became one of my journals of stitchery to hold all my Ann Brooks tags I did in the 52 tag challenge. So lovely, thanks William. And then now I've got a heap of pages that are English that can, um, you know, there's history in itself, just reading some of these Shakespearean sentences which are just near impossible to read at times. I remember studying Macbeth at school and I was like, what is this? My young brain could not absorb <laughs> William Shakespeare. I don't think again now. Okay, so now I can release, release the clips. Beautiful. And we now have our journal stitched in. So I've still got a little bit of time. Sometimes, which I think I'm going to do, I decorate between these if I can find my lace that is thin enough. And this one here might be. I like to pop a little bit of lace through the center, but I think that might be a little too big. Oh, what a shame. So it's just puckering up a little bit. So. I could probably trim the edge of that lace off, but I'm not going to because it might ruin the integrity of the lace and I don't think I have anything I like that's narrower. But if that had just a few mil extra in space, I sometimes glue down those centers some additional lace. So whoever gets this journal, that'd probably be something you could have a little look at. You might find something if that little curved edge wasn't on that, that would fit so sweet. Like I could probably make it fit, but it's just not quite, quite right. What I might do is just pop some of it on the edge of pages. I want to do a bit of lace trimming on this one. Not that this is probably the best one for it. Oh, I don't mind it. I think I want to use, let's do that next. Here we go, off on a tangent. Just bear with me. I'm just looking for <clears throat> some dyed lace that would suit. I'm still here. Sorry guys, probably should have thought this through a little bit better. Is that, no, it's the wrong colour. Hang on a moment. <clears throat> I 
probably thinking, you're probably thinking, where is she gone? What is she doing? This one. This one will do the trick. Because I've got a mix of really old laces right through to brights. So I sort of want to keep mixing it up, so to speak. Get rid of my bull clips out of the way. Because I'm now starting a whole new mess. So what I want to do with this journal, which I didn't do with the last because that was more of a grungy feel, is I want to edge the pages with some lace. So I've got this little one here, which is a bit of a go-to lace for me. I just like the way that the curve pokes out through the pages. So I'm just rolling off a little bit. And I need my clear craft glue. open yes so I'm just going to work out where to put my lace and it's just going to slide through yeah I'm not digging it there that decorative piece I think is enough by itself so it's sort of competing so I'm just going to sneak into the book a little bit <clears throat> I might pop it on the music page do I put it there? No. Yeah, I like it on the music. The music doesn't actually have any stitching on it. So it is a good candidate for such a treatment. So I'm just going to put a very thin, please be thin. Let's just do a practice run on a piece of paper in the bin. A thin smear, real thin, and we'll pop a little bit of lace through our journal. I do like to put lace trims on the edge of the um, signature page, the starting page. Find that can be quite pretty. It depends, you know, sometimes you don't want it too lacy. Just a hint is enough. Especially if you're selling journals, you sort of got to be a bit mindful that not everyone's into lace. But it'd be nice to have a little bit sprinkled through this. So let's have another little look and see where else we could do some. Otherwise we head straight to, well, that'd be a good, good page to do lace on. Let's add a little bit to this edge. So I get my thin layer of glue. This one we might put the lace to the inside. Ah, my lace is upside down. Hold. No, I'm going to do it to the outside. I like how it peeks out around the edge of the page. I think it's a nice touch. But I'm a bit of a lace girl. I, I'm not full on lace, like probably shabby chic. I love looking at all that. But I don't seem to create that style of lace work. I seem to be a little bit more held back on the lace. But I do like a touch of it. So look at that. How cute is that? Love it. So, oh, let's put a bit of lace on Edith. We'll go either side of the page. So as it opens, there'll be a pop of lace. Lovely. So this lace then too I will use to trim throughout if needed, depending, you know. But I will, you know how we put the little ring on the spine? I will add a piece of this lace to that ring so that if they want to do 
like what I am here and trim ephemera with lace. They've got a little sample of it on the spine ready to go. It's a bit of a a bit of a um, uh, what's the word? Materials, supplies, supplies to use on their journal. So that's all glued down. So now when that opens in the center, there's lace either side. Oh, how sweet. You're probably looking at it going, eh, I'm not really a lace person. Not so sweet, but that's okay. Okay. Now let's go through. There's the other side of that. I'm not going to put lace there because I'm going to attach something. So I don't think that's necessary. There's my music. Let's do lace. This time we'll glue it on the opposite side because when we come through the book, our lace was on the right hand side. So this time I want to flip the page over and put it on the left. It doesn't matter if you don't but I'm just being a little pedantic. And maybe by the time I get to the third signature, I will forget that step and the lace will be wherever, which is quite possible. But if I do get methodical, that is probably one thing that would pop into my mind. But at the end of the day, they're journals, they're junk journals, they're handmade pieces of art. So once that's had time to sort of sit and dry, I then go back through and just flick it with my nail. And if it feels like there's an area that hasn't gripped, go back in and um, yeah, give it a little bit more. I'm gonna add that there. That's a tuck. So I'm gonna put a piece of lace through here just to finish that edge. And I will put, how will I do it? Will I go, no, I will put the curve away from the edge because I don't want the paper sliding in or the journal card sliding in to have to catch on it and fight with it. Simple, effective. Very simple. And if you're making journals for sale like this, this little element is really simple for you to do. Um, cost effective because it hasn't taken a lot of time. What will we do there? I think I'll leave that and I'll leave that. Okay, so we'll just let that all sit and apply a little pressure throughout. Might just flip back through to make sure there's no glue scooting through the lace and catching pages underneath, but it should be okay. I, yeah. Okay, so let's have a look at this. No, oh, that's that's perfect for lace. So let's do it. They could add a little pocket to this page. We may do that yet. And it could be holding some bits and pieces. A little lace trim will be in position. By having lace two on the page like this, it does give you a little location to put a bulb pin and hang a charm, but you do need to make sure that that lace is really secure. And I think I will do a bulb pin up here. So I'm just gonna take a moment to put a little extra glue behind that little flower so that it's really, really glued down. 
and I'll grab that bulb pin while I'm having the thought. And I'm going to just pin it there. want to come back and pop a charm on that so I'll just catch it through the fabric just needs to be just caught a little bit could go through the paper as well to really make sure it's nice and secure but I think I've added enough glue there to catch that okay away we go again Well, that's perfect for some lace. Wind a little bit more off. You do use a fair meterage when you're doing this. It's quite surprising how much lace you use. So I tend to buy these types of page edge laces in bulk. And this one I actually picked up at a garage sale. I think I mentioned in a previous video where the lady was manufacturing um that would yeah this probably probably the video where i was making the spine for this where i used the lingerie lace on the spine underneath the burlap top style lace and she had this little one by the meter so i grabbed it and it turned out i ended up buying the whole ream that she had it's just been so handy just having heaps of it. It's just some laces that you like, go for all the time. You pick them up all the time. Well, you know, they're the ones you can afford to just grab good meterage of. There's my pocket. I won't do anything there because I don't want to interfere with things going in and out. That's going to be a fold out. I might. No, I won't this one here I want to do lace on ah, once again we're putting it to the side don't know how long I've been doing this when I stitched in the signatures I looked at the time and it was 15 minutes now it's 30 minutes and I know the first part of this video because I've pieced two together it was at least a 30 minute video so this one may be creeping up in time a little bit I do apologize if you're starting to think my goodness when is she ever going to end but it seems that most of you like myself we just turn on these videos they're playing in the background it's like having someone visiting and you're sitting at the end of your craft table so you're probably busy anyway and barely taking any notice of me so it's all good. Now I will, I oh, know I won't. I was gonna put some lace on this um, edge here, but I won't because there's this envelope thing happening. So I'm gonna just skip it for now. That'll have something attached. I'm sure there'll be something in here. Yeah, this May page can have some lace. it'll probably just have a pocket so you can still sort of see most of that text I think we've done well considering we've been hacking into a beautiful Edith holding book I hope I've done it justice I hope so most of the pages I've tried to keep in their entirety not quite ready to make full-on ephemera out of all of her bits and pieces because I didn't actually have a lot of scraps left a few little bits but not much I'm just jazzing up the original pages which I'm okay with I don't feel like I hacked too much and to be able to use the cover to make another journal too I think that was a bit of a bonus that helped me yeah I'm gonna do uh, I don't know if I will. I might put it on this butterfly page instead. Just 
just a little pop of it here. Now, when I get to the end, I won't jiggle this too much because I want that glue to grip. And the more I muck around with it, the more there's a chance that it won't. So I'm just going to other butterfly page. I'm going to do that one as well. Gosh, I think we've probably used a meter easily of lace already. to put some lace in there. Little Birdie would look pretty with lace coming out behind him and this I feel is a little bit cut short. The page looks obvious that I've trimmed it so I think by putting a little line of lace through it will look really good. Oops. Oops, a bit cack-handed there. That took a few minutes. There we go. Yeah, that's pretty. Music, why not? Let's put some lace here as well. Feeling very lush. That's a bit thin there, that's not gonna grab the lid on because I think we're at the end. Okay, so the next video will be filling pockets, adding pockets and doing those types of things. Now I might do a little bit of that off camera because we've made a lot of videos. I don't know what number this one is, but it's getting up there. There's only so many days in the month. So I think I will off camera fill everything stick everything it's going to be more of what I did in the first journal first two journals my boxes are literally sitting here ready to go so there's nothing new there I've made the pressed flower elements um, so I will fill and finish this journal and then I'll just do a flip through otherwise we will be here for a month of Sundays we'll never ever ever get this Edith project done because William's next William Morris plus as I said in a previous video I do want to sell some of my um, journals that I've been hoarding time to let go and I've got a couple, I just want to make a few extra journals to add to the sale because I've just, I don't know, I've got these ideas rattling in my head. They're nothing amazing and they're variations of what we've done. So I do want to go through that as well. And as, as I said, the fourth journal, I'm going to add Calico inserted pages. So same thing, create a signature, stitch them in. And that calico will then um, become a space where you can add embroidery, slow stitch pieces. Look at that. Isn't it she isn't she gorgeous? I love it. Don't fiddle, Corinne. Leave it. That lace is still finding its home. Plenty of room to expand and add and oh, love it. Nice, soft. And while we're here, I'm just going to cut a piece of no I won't I was going to cut the piece of lace here but that means I have to cut all the other pieces that I want to add which will be eyelash yarn and all sorts of random things so let's just let her sit 
let her dry. There's heaps of room in that, so I'll be able to add quite a bit of ephemera. Yeah, gorgeous. All right, everyone, I will leave you there. That was a long video, but at least we've got this now contained. Laces on, and now I can just fill the pockets. Okay, everyone, look after yourselves, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye for now.